Hi, I'm Andrew Moy from Tightlines Fly Fishing in Parsippany, New Jersey. In this video, we're going to be talking about the switch cast and single spay. And the reason I'm doing a switch cast and single spay in the same video is because they're relatively the same cast. Uh, the difference between a switch cast and a single spay is a single spay has a change of direction. To do a proper uh, switch cast, first thing we're going to need is a lift. We're going to lift lift the line up a little bit, up out of the water. And if you look at my lift, the rod's relatively shallow, meaning I don't have a steep angle on the rod. What I don't want to do is leave my bottom hand real low and, steep, and lift the rod very sharp. This is going to make for an awkward sweep going back. We want to make sure when we do our lift, it's more like lifting a shotgun. You're lifting both hands. When you get to the top of your lift, you're going to track the rod on a slight downward angle as you come back. Basically what you want to do is pull laterally and down at the same time. And all while you're doing this, you're accelerating. You're accelerating, gaining speed through this. And if you don't think too hard about it, you just flow through it, it'll really be helpful. And again, we're gonna lift and transition right into that sweep. If you notice when I lift, I'm going very slow on my lift and then sweeping with speed. A big mistake people make is they lift fast and then sweep. And what happens is your ankle, your uh, ankle, anchor piles up like that and what you don't what you don't want is that you want your anchor to land nice and quiet like that so a good lift a smooth sweep when you're sweeping again you want to really avoid you want to minimize any up and down movement of the rod tip that sweep should be relatively level you're just kind of dropping the rod as you're sweeping what you want to avoid, a big mistake I see is the rod dropping first and then trying to sweep. Well, what happens is you lose all your tension. To keep the tension, you drop as you sweep at the same time. Lift, sweep, and drop. Okay, and that's your switch cast. You can see right now I'm not changing direction. If you look at my hands, my bottom hand is not doing much. Staying here, there, and I, as I, as I pass perpendicular to where I'm casting, I begin to flare out a little bit and then lift the rod up into what's called a firing position. Right here is your firing position. You can see I get my, both my hands up, and at this point my bottom hand is out in front of the cast. But before I get there, I stop here on my backstroke, and then I come up into my firing position here. And the reason I do that, if I... Uh, if I come back and that bottom hand throws out while I'm stroking back, what happens is, if you notice here, my D-loop is pointed this way. Well, I'm switch casting, I'm casting this way right now, I need my D-loop straight back here. And you can see this D-loop is pointed behind me. You're going to lose all your tension. So again, we're going to lift, we're going to pull back, and we're going to flare out and then up. You can see I get a nice quiet anchor, and I'm in a very comfortable position to make a forward stroke. Again, lift, sweep, lift again, fire it. <clears throat> now, when we get into the single spay, we're going to take the same switch cast, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cast so we can cast out across the current. So my anchor on my switch cast, if you notice, was off to my side here, a little bit out in front. That's where my anchor should be on my switch cast when I'm casting this way, towards you guys, towards the camera. When I start to cast this way now, I need my anchor to come off up, up current a little bit, up, up into here. And the reason for that is, if I do a, a switch cast like this, and my anchor lands here, and I try and cast this way with my single spay, my line's going to cross in a pile. I don't want to cross my line, so now when I do my single spay, you can see I'm getting my anchor now up above. How do I do that? <clears throat> I do it the same way I do the switch cast, only I'm going to turn it now. And a good way to hold the rod, that bottom hand should be about center of your chest, kind of right above your stomach, right below your breastbone here, right in, your, uh, right in the center right there. Okay, This elbow is relaxed, my shoulder is relaxed. Very important to be relaxed, especially in your shoulders and in your elbow here. And you can see the elbow is kind of towards the rod. I'm just going to straighten the line back out. And when I lift, I'm lifting in here. When I sweep, I'm going to turn my body. And I'm, I'm not doing much. I'm not really pulling my hands much in the beginning here. 
I'm kind of lifting and I'm turning and then I'm pulling it back. And then again, lifting into my firing position. Lift, sweep, lift. Now I'm gonna teach you something about your anchor and what your anchor is doing. You can use your anchor to, uh, to let yourself know what you're doing right or wrong. Your anchor is supposed to be here on this single spay. If you leave your anchor out in front, meaning it's not going all the way back into the position it's supposed to be in, you're most likely not accelerating the rod tip or the rod. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is maybe you're, you're kind of starting fast and then ending kind of soft. And look at how my anchor landed way down below me here. That's not going to work for a single spay. You got to get that anchor higher. Now, if you notice that your anchor is going too far back, okay, that's too far out of position there. The reason for that is <clears throat> my rod's too high as I track around. So if you see a low anchor out in front of you, you're probably not accelerating well. Uh, it could also be that you're stroking too low. That's pretty uncommon. I would say more often with a low anchor, it's just a, a bad lack of acceleration. To kind of correct that is just lift slow, and when you start your stroke, just commit to it. Don't worry if it's right or wrong, just commit to it. You gotta keep the rod moving. That's the only way to keep the rod bent, is to continually move the rod faster and faster away from the fly line. So I'm gonna lift, and I'm gonna keep that rod moving. <clears throat> now on the high anchor, we were talking about before how that anchor was back too far out of position, that's because your rod's probably tracking too high. That'll cause a high anchor. The other thing that could cause that is coming back on kind of an upward angle. And very often you see there, the anchor will kind of land in the right spot, but it kind of skips and it doesn't want to stay in position. Usually what a skipping anchor like that means is that your, your, your backstroke is on too much of an upward angle and it's sending the D loop up into the air, which is making the tip of the line just kind of skip. And when you go stroke forward, that anchor is kind of slipping. So if you see that, that means that you just need to have confidence in your stroke and, f and do it a little flatter. You can see I had a nice flat stroke there. That anchor stayed right there. It didn't leave the water when I went forward. And the biggest thing with a single spay I find for people that really helps them to get it is, is to really just focus on committing to the stroke. If you, if you hesitate and you, you think too hard about what you're doing, you'll have a very hard time in getting that anchor to place correctly. You have to really flow right through it. Um, so I don't, I'd rather see people commit to the stroke and get the stroke wrong than not commit to the stroke, not accelerate properly, and do the stroke perfect. Because what happens is if you do the stroke perfect but the anchor doesn't go right, what, ha you ha what happens is you start trying to adjust your stroke to get the anchor right, but really all you need to do is accelerate the rod. So you have to work on just flowing through the cast. Uh, one thing that I find helps is start with your bottom hand off to this side of your body. If I bring this hand over here, what ends up happening is as I bring the rod back, this top hand goes out too far. And ultimately what happens is I, ha I come back in and the D-loop, you can see how this, I'm not really casting right now, I'm just kind of rolling, but you can see this line is cutting in behind me. And that's caused by over rotation. And that over rotation is caused by that bottom hand being over here so much that it's causing his top hand to fly out. I need to stay in a straight line. If I'm casting across this way, I need to stay in a straight line. So if I, if I stay in my hands over here and I bring this top hand through closer to my body and then push out, it keeps the rod tip on a straight line. Look at how the line is out away from me now and the D-loop is lined right up with where I'm casting. Again, I'm not doing an actual cast here, but you can see how that's starting to line the line up. Let me go back in. I'll set the line over here. So here's, if I start over here and I, I fly out, how you can see how kind of everything starts to want to wrap behind me. Makes it awkward. If I start over here, you can see how my D-loop is lined right up with where I'm trying to cast. Now, if I want to change larger direction, and I don't know how much room I have here, but I may get caught in the rocks, but if I want to cast over here and really change direction, what I need to do is really sweep that around even more. You can see now my anchor is even higher and my D-loop is lined up back here to cast out across here.
So again, a good single spay. I'm just going to kind of flow through it now. Lift, sweep, lift, and go. And you can see that time I kind of went a little slow, a little soft, kind of to show it, try and slow it down. What happened was my D loop kind of fell a little bit before I really got forward. And this one I'm going to, I'm going to th um, flow through it a little better. And you'll notice how, how my D loop didn't collapse there and I had a lot more power on the end of the cast. The key with this is keep the rod moving. There should be no hesitation. A lot of people think you come back and you hesitate and you kind of wait for the D loop. If I wait for the D loop, it falls almost right away. I got no chance of making a forward cast before that D loop hits the water. If you watch here, I sweep, I lift, and I, I'm immediately starting that forward stroke. The key to starting that forward stroke is to lead with the rod pointed back as long as possible before turning the rod over. This is what loads the rod, the turnover is what unloads the rod, and, and the stop. So when we do a forward stroke, we need to try and lead and then stop. Lead, hard stop. And that's what's going to shoot that line. Again, I'm going to lift, sweep level, lift again, and out. Try and stop your rod. Okay, if I'm casting this way, that's, I'm going to call that 12 o'clock. This is 3 o'clock. You want to stop your rod at about 4.30 relative to where you're casting. If I come beyond that, what's going to happen is my D-loop is going to over-rotate. So I'm going to let this one fall. This, sh this is a good, a good lift and sweep. Lift. Sweep the 430. There's my 430. You can see the point of my D loop is lined up where my target is. That's what I'm looking for. Lift, sweep, lift. Good cast, nice quiet anchor out across the river.